looking at equilibrium calculations. And you, in, in an equilibrium calculations, you're given initial conditions. You've got a mixture of reactants or reactants and products or products. And the system goes to equilibrium. And there are two types of calculations that we're going to do. The first type, which is this problem, is we let a system achieve equilibrium and we measure one con one co the concentration of one species. From that, we can calculate the concentration of the others and then calculate the equilibrium constant. The second type of problem will be when we know the initial conditions and we know the equilibrium constant and we calculate the equilibrium concentrations, how far the reaction proceeded. So in all of these calculations, we use what I call a Rice diagram, which is you first start off with the reaction that you're, you're describing, OK? So that would be R for reaction. And in this problem here, our reaction is 2NO plus 2H2, which may form or may be formed by the reaction of N2 plus 2H2O. And I'm leaving out the phases to keep the chalkboard um, clear. And realize that the initial conditions might be reactant loaded and goes this way, or product loaded and goes this way. So in these, what we typically do is, is we draw a diagram here. And we call it the Rice diagram. So you have the R for the reaction, the initial concentrations, which in effect is a calculation of Q. Then you have the changes in concentration as the reaction goes towards equilibria. And finally, you have, once the reaction is over, what are the equilibrium concentrations, OK? Now, in this problem, we want to calculate for k. So we need to write the equilibrium constant expression, k equals. And remember, if this was a heterogeneous equilibria, um, like one of the, this, if this was a liquid water, it would not be in the k expression. But as you can see in the overlay, um, everything is a gas. So we have the product to their coefficients. So we have N2. And what needs to be understand is this is the value at equilibria once the reaction is over, times the H2O squared. And because it's a gas, it's in the equilibrium constant expression, divided by the NO squared, because its coefficient is 2, times the H2 squared. And what needs to be emphasized is these values are at equilibrium. Now, what did we start with? Okay, um, What we started with, and I have in my handout, which you've got up on the overlay, is we started with 0.1 molar. Um, we have in a one liter container. So this is 0.1. And this should be concentration, OK? So it's 0.1 moles per liter. Um, we have 0.05. And we have 0.1. And we have no, none of this, OK? Um, and then I, I like to write down what I'm given. And the other thing we know is that at equilibria, this is 0.062 um, molar, OK? So um, and re recognize that it says 0.1 mole, but it's 0.1 mole per liter because it's in a one liter container. If it had been in a 10 liter container, this would have been a 0.01, OK? Now, um, I can immediately look at this and see that I have a reactant loaded system because this is 0, OK? Um, and therefore, um, this value would be 0 if I calculated my reaction quotient Q. It would have been 0 times 0.1 divided by 0.05 divided by 0.1, which is 0. And 0 is less than K no matter what k is. There's no way we can go this way because this is 0. OK, now, what we do here is we ask how much is this change, and we look at the proportionality of the changes. So every time two of these react, we have a minus 2x. Two of these react. One of these is formed, and two of these are formed. So in the change of the Rice diagram, the C, you, x is the extent of reaction, how far it goes. If we're really close to equilibria, these initial conditions, x is small. OK? If we're very far from equilibria, x is large. So from here, if k was a very large number, 
this, it's going to be big because we're going to make lots of products. But if k was a fraction, like an insoluble salt, and, and, and the equilibria really was this way and a reaction doesn't happen, this is going to be small, OK? Now, what I now do is say, at equilibria, what do I have? Now, incidentally, since I was already given this concentration, I can now, I'm going to write below it, I can say that what I have at equilibria is what I started with minus what I consumed, OK? So what I started with minus what I consumed is 0.062, because I had to be given one of these at equilibria to solve this. So here I have what I started with, 0.05 minus 2x. What I started with, I'll just write 0 plus x. What I started with, plus 2x, OK? Now, um, I have over here 0 0.062 minus x. So this is my, I know this value. So I can say 0 0.062 equals 0 0.1 minus 2x. And I solve this, and I get x equals 0 0.019. OK? So I can now calculate this value here, OK? 0 0.05 minus 2 times 0 0.019 is equal to 0 0.012. I can calculate this value, which is 0 plus 0 0.019, so it's obviously 0 0.019. And this one is um, 0 0.1 plus 2 times 0 0.019, which is 0.138. Now I take these values, which are my equilibria values, plug it into here, OK? So I have um, 0 0.019 for my nitrogen. I have 0.138 squared for my water at equilibria divided by 0 0.062 squared, which is my NO. And that was actually given to me in the problem statement. And I have my, um, the last one is the H2, which is 0 0.012. And that has to be squared, because the coefficient is 2. And I get out my calculator, and K is equal to 653. OK? So in summary, you're given initial concentrations. If Q equals K, nothing happens. If Q is not equal to K, something happens. If you want to calculate K, you need to know one of the equilibria concentrations. Then you can say that the initial minus the change equals that equilibrium concentration right here. And that allows you to calculate x. Once you know x, you, you calculate the equilibrium constants of the other species. And then you, ex you, you put the equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium expression. And you calculate the numerical value of k. It's as easy as that.